Looks like I made some work for myself, right, part two. If you remember, Chile has just asked Paul Unslaved a question about the right to travel. Commerce, you're traveling, you're not driving. So now why are we, okay, so why do all of these cases bring in the term commerce, somewhere or the other? Somewhere or the other, they're going to bring up commerce, right? So that's how and you again, we have to remember, case. the Supreme Court is not infallible. It's a bunch of men and women who sit up in uniform, in costume, as part of agent and agency, which means they're in a corporate capacity, and they're making decisions. They're not infallible. There's many times where they'll say to me, every time I, that's why you can't argue with people using Supreme Court decisions, because every time you bring one up that's, that supports your decision, they bring up one where the man discounts that decision. So if you lose your arguments in court with the wrong decisions, that's because the judges are not infallible. Hmm. But again, this is why men and women in a republic can never really be governing over other men and women, because we know philosophically men and women are not able to govern themselves. They're not able to come to their own accurate conclusions of what's objectively right. What makes me think I'm going to put them in costume in corporate capacity and they're going to be able to decide what's right and wrong for me, right? This is another part of the problem with law and the land. Law of the land comes from God's law, which is imbued through man's conscience. The more we keep looking to other men and their decisions and their articulations, the more we've lost the point here, right? Now, if you will, just take a step back from your own religion or if you have no religion. It seems quite clear to me that the Constitution and Amendment, a specific interpretation of God's law, out of the equation. No God's law is defined. Now I know your Pledge of Allegiance has a reference to God. However, that is a very late addition to your Pledge of Allegiance. I think in the 1950s, if I remember correctly. And my own interpretation of that is that it doesn't matter what God it doesn't specifically specify a Christian God. Again, these folks are all in a corporate capacity. They can only rule on what the corporation can and can't do. And if they make a ruling that's outside the philosophical precepts and foundations of law in this country, which again, all men created equal. All men have a right to property and pursuit of happiness. You would have thought that the constitutional scholar knows that the constitution doesn't say that all men are created equally. They only have equal protection under the law. Of course, the law affects your right to property. And I don't believe that it mentions the happiness of the individual. It's, it's, again, criminally the foundations of law. If you don't have a crime, which is synonymous with loss, injury, and harm, then you cannot move a case legitimately. Unless it's in one of the dual jurisdictions that I asked the administrator, the magistrate, what some would call a judge. He said there's two jurisdictions, common law, constitutional, and administrative. They have you in administrative jurisdiction one way or the other in most of these courts, whether you know it or not. Because you're already, they got you from the gate because you appeared as a person. Right? In the all-caps entity, they're not looking for the man, they're looking for that person. You appeared, you created a joinder, they searched you at the front door. They already know you don't know who and what you are, because a man would never give up his Fourth Amendment right to the freedom of... So, of so what do you season. do? You just don't show up? I mean, how do you remedy this? Because this is the... Omega Mel agrees, but wishes he asked the question. I mean, he really is Omega to the beta. The point. Those who make peaceful resolution impossible make violent re revolution inevitable, is what John Kennedy said. I didn't say that. What I'm telling you is... They give you almost no option to where you don't feel some kind of charge energetically, right? That's what the name of this game is. It's spiritual. It's energetic. They call it a charge, like a battery. We're going to put a charge on you. They want you in fear one way or the other. Fear to show up, fear to not show up. Yeah, but he asked you a question, and there's an answer to it. Please give us the answer. But again, what's true and what's right? If I'm a man, I know who and what I am and what I'm not, then no other man or woman on this land has a right to search me. So if you're claiming you have to search me to go into that room, then that room must not be for me, a man okay, or woman. Wait, 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 wait. It must be for corporate citizen slaves. Interesting. So you're saying... You never turn up unless you're cuffed and stuffed. So I, listen, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm with you 100%. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to push back a little bit, but remember, I'm with you. I agree with you. I so love it, I'm, bro. Hold me accountable. Give it to no, me. Hit me with both arrows. So, so that people can get the answers, right? So Chile is with him 100%, and he's only asking the question so that people can get the answers. So that is Chile clearly finding that he is a soft sit. So now I get pulled over. I got a ticket for doing 90 and an 80, and now... Uh, they gave me a ticket, and now, what, am I just not going to go to court? Because they're going to want to search me, which is a violation of my Fourth Amendment. Okay, Chili, this is where you could make case law. Go along to the court in Arlington. Turn up at the door. Refuse to be searched, which is only there for security reasons. Find out what happens and take your case through the uh, federal system for violation of your Fourth Amendment and see if the Supreme Court agrees with you. So this is when you were talking the other day. I just wanted to know, like, do I just say, I'm not coming? <laughs> like, how does that, like, David, yeah, how do you get away with that? Like, like, you, have to, you have to come to that conclusion for yourself based on your spiritual journey, right? The Christed being would not have sat there, the one that we founded this whole civilization on, and say, what would I do if somebody threatened me who's under Shatan's law in the synagogue of Satan? I once again say it's quite clear from your constitution that religion is to be kept out of the equation. 
which religion or sect is the correct one. It's not going to get into the fear of what's going to happen and not happen. He's going to say, I know who and what I am and what I'm not, and I'm not under your dictation. Furthermore, I understand meaning, definition, and purpose. I know the letter of what you're doing, the legal code, the policy, how it all works. I know you're going to try to get me in a room as a person, stand up as the corporation, and call yourself the people, right? I know what you're wow. doing. You're trying to do wow. fraud and barricade. Okay, you're, so trying to, you're trying to trick me out of my position is what they call it on the street. You ain't going to pimp me. If you want to pimp me, you got to bring me in in shackles and do it to me by force. All you're right, not so let me ask you, let me ask you this. Let's is that a Chili's thumbs up for the shackles? Or has he given away that he doesn't really believe in law and is actually a sod sit in disguise? So you, 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 the definition, you're not a driver, you're a traveler. So let's say you're driving, you're traveling and a cop pulls you over. Can you take us through the process of what happens, what you say to the cop so people can understand more thoroughly of how this goes? Because sure. I feel like this sounds like fucking unicorns and rainbows right now. I'm just trying to grasp this. And I know you're right. That's what everything yeah. is right. But I would not be able to pull this off because I don't really know or have an understanding of how you do this. Can you go through like a basic out for me? Another sensible question from the beta. I mean, his stated position wasn't sensible, but the question was sensible. Elementary. Sure, forget about all your mind control, if you can. Forget about everything you think. So let's you say the cop over, you don't have your license plate, you don't have your license, and... Uh, Man, I'm that's crazy, huh? Yeah, I'm is. moving property that I upkeep, maintain, and, and I'm responsible. Comment, it's complete, no, it's crazy to others. <laughs> me, this makes sense. But I want to know, boom, you just get pulled over, the lights are going, and you're like, I can't wait to, I can't wait to, I can't wait to lay it down on this guy. How do you do it? So, Paul, well, where do we start, it? right? Right. Where do we start? Let me answer, Paul. And you tell me if I'm correct, because I've been watching you, and I've watched a bunch of your videos now. And tell me if I'm correct here, so that that way, because you speak, you know, so abundantly well, that some people who don't speak as you aren't going to be able to keep up, because you are just so good with words. So let me see if I can paraphrase this for the layperson, who's not quite as technically constitutional as you are, and see if this is correct, so that, so that I can articulate this and if it's right. So what, what you're stating is that you are a free person, and you are given your natural rights by God. And so another man can't stop you on the street with your property and say, show me your papers and I'm going to find you and see you even though there's no victim. And so the beta male had asked a sensible question, but Amiga steps in, paraphrases it for all us unintelligent people and ends up with this classic where there's no victim. And so you Forget say, about the philosophy of it. UCC 1308 has now been accepted as commercial law on all lands that we call states. UCC 1308 says nobody can be forced into any contract. So you cannot make the statement, do this or else, when it comes to filling out paperwork, signing it, and changing my status and standing or the title of that property. You can't do it. And it's philosophically sound, right? Because we know the philosophy of this is safety is always the means to get everybody out of their private property and their rights. The idea of safety. We're just here again regulating everyone for their safety. Now pay us some money, sign these contracts, retitle your property so we can regulate it for everybody's safety. And if you don't do those contracts and do those forms, we're going to put you in jail or take your livelihood. That's not how public service works. Right? So I think Chili's intervention didn't help us. Paul Unslave chooses to live in the land of the United States, in a state I'm not sure of. And society as a whole has determined that he should obey the laws that are set and the laws of the states have to comply with the constitution of the united states classic of sit isn't a member of any society right but again that's how policy enforcement works because the majority of folks it has become the common law of this land that nobody knows the difference between legal and lawful everybody's riding around with plates everybody's part of the body politic and the corporate structure and therefore it's presumed and assumed by most of these servants that you are not a man or woman of the people you are part what's, of mankind what's the difference? you are a human you are a person right what's person in latin is a between legal and lawful what's the exact difference between i told legal the guy before i told dave before before off air at one point uh, in certain state corporations it was legal to take other men and women as property we called it slavery it was totally legal it was legal under the crown guess what it was never lawful well i believe at the time it was lawful and legal more word salad it was that's we fought a war over it was not lawful you can't take people and their property as your state commodities regulate them and decide what they will and won't have mm. so again we fought wars over these concepts what's once legal is never lawful a lot of times right Right. Okay, so, so Paul. And then I pulled up, I pulled, I pulled, pulled up UC 1308. A party that with explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. Such words as without prejudice, under protest, or the like. Are you know what that, you know that, that amounts to? I can go get all your stupid fucking paperwork to stop you from shooting me on the side of the road because I know what may happen, but none of it precludes my God-given rights. You can't force contract on me and regulate me through that contract. It's like saying, I'm going to take a wife and marry her under coercion and then beat her for the rest of her life. And she can't do nothing because she's in a contract we call marriage. No, it's unlawful. I don't care if your culture says it's legal. There's many cultures where it's legal to beat on your woman, cut off her clitoris, and do all kinds of types of control and regulation out of ego. Okay, this so is the failing of the human condition and the psychology we see everywhere at all times. All right. Chili's enjoying this too much. I'm wondering what his right hand is doing. 
How can a constitutional law scholar be lapping up this soft sit nonsense? So, Paul, like, like I asked before, can you take us through the step-by-step -step process? If I'm understanding this right, the minute you consent or agree to the cop, that's when you're under their jurisdiction, correct? That's when you go under their rule of law, correct? Chili's obviously not in, but of course it's incorrect. Sure, can, you take, up, uh, can you take us through a step-by-step -step process about, let's say the lights are flashing, you're getting pulled over right now, cop walks up and says license and registration. What do you say? Where do you go from there? I mean, there's many places we can start. We can start with the fact that all of these public service vehicles are considered to be emergency vehicles in their code, in their regulations. Their emergency lights are not there to stop people and check and force contract on the side of the road. They're called first responders. Those lights are for them to respond to an emergency. So you may want to ask them, where is the emergency? What's the emergency? Oh, there isn't any. So you're misusing those lights to you're pretend speeding. to be... Let's say the cop says you're speeding. Speeding is not a crime. It's a traffic infraction. The word traffic is synonymous with trafficking. Trafficking is moving good service and peoples from point A to point B for payment. It's why we call it drug traffic and human traffic. Why can't answer the question and he just goes into his word salad, which he's learned by rote. I think you'll find that speeding is a crime. It's covered by criminal code and society deemed it so. So again, someone somewhere is going to have to learn the meanings of these words and terms if we're going to uphold the law versus forcing policy on men and women who have rights. I guess what I'm trying to get here, Paul, is you're, you're very uh, astute in what you're saying. Dude. You're a scholar at this stuff. I'm trying to just break it down for my audience. The cop shows up to your. How do you get? How do you get out of? But this, this is the thing. You're telling me how do we get out of something that we're already so far into that the people who are supposed to uphold the law don't know the law, don't care, but you and are therefore you, you're able to get out of it. I have, but other times I've gotten my property taken. I've gotten put in a cell. I've gotten my guns taken. Right. I've gotten them back. I've gotten the stuff back with no license, registration, insurance. They told me they couldn't give it back to me. They told me they wouldn't give my guns back till I came to court. I don't go to their court. They have to drag me in. They drag me in. They say a few things. I tell them I'm not coming back here. I'm, I'm not submitting to your policy, regulation, and code. They don't even keep me on the bond last time. They let me out with a $1 bond that I didn't even pay and didn't even sign for. I was in a town that I'd never been to and was never going back to. They knew damn well I was passing through. I didn't meet any of the conditions for bail or bond. And they did it anyway, because they know, like I know, they're going to sheep. Mo they're going to fleece most of the sheep who don't know who and what they are. And if they argue with me and take it to trial, they're going to spend a whole bunch of money to get back to the foundation, which doesn't change. So there you have it. He has been forced to submit. Sounds like he's a runner from jurisdiction, just like Chile. So as long as you stick to your guns and know your rights, you can see this through. I'm never telling you any, uh, this is, I'm going to be like the universe. There are no guarantees in this. Okay. You don't get guarantees. You don't deserve guarantees because the majority of men and women are cowards and have been for a long time. What you get is a guarantee of self-respect. What you get is the guarantee that you know who and what you are and what you're not and you went past your fear and you challenged yourself and you grew and rose to the occasion. That's the only guarantee you get. Whether you're going to find yourself in a cell or dead, I can't guarantee that, right? Because again, for a man, especially to secure his rights, he has to be willing to kill, die, or go to jail. That's the reality of it. It's history's lesson. You ain't going to... Right, I think that's a uh, good point to end part two with Chile laughing at people going to jail or even dying. I have to confess, I didn't realise when I started this how much agreement there would be with Chile with the soft sit ideas. Thanks for watching and I will be back with part three.